Hey everybody out there, this is Chris Nicholson. You have reached video two of how to build your own grand piano, digital grand piano that is. Um, so I took the um, I took the keyboard apart and I took all the keys out. And of course you see there's the contacts right there and all the screws. Now one thing that I found out about this keyboard is let me set my camera down, is that it's pretty cool, but if you really just want the keyboard chassis itself, of course you can work around the whole chassis, but you're going to have to cut all throughout here, just basically all around the chassis, right over here, because the keyboard, uh, the keys sit right on top of here, and also they're hooked on all right over here, but before you do that, you have to take everything out of the keyboard and the sitting area where the keys actually sit at um, that's what you're going to actually have to cut around for this kind of keyboard um, as in the other stuff the microchips and everything they just sit as a little cradle and they, they come off real easily they have these little slots that they sit and everything is separate which is pretty cool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off. These are the um, these are the key grommets right over here, so they can sit in place. And this is a little silicone right here. It's very easy to take apart this keyboard, and some most digital pianos that I find it's very easy to take apart because it's not nothing too too much into them. Uh, you will get a little bit of silicone grease on your hands. You just wipe that off. And underneath here, this key contact over here comes into two pieces which is really neat so what I suggest you do if you want to still keep the chassis and these contacts will always come out that's no problem because they're all the same size so that's no problem I take the contacts out anyway because I have to clean up I have to clean the board and Basically, any little dust particles that are in there have to clean all that up. But let me see if you can see it through the camera. But right over here is that you have these connections right here. If you're willing to keep the chassis, what I suggest is that you disconnect each and every one of them just one by one. Disconnect one, like say, for instance, I'll give you an example. I'm gonna, I'm gonna disconnect this one right here. And this pulls up and it disconnects just like this. Just like that. One by one and untuck them from underneath its resting place. So that's one right there. And you see where there's a red mark right over here. What you're gonna have to do is pull this down and tuck it back in. Try not to bend any of those levers right there. And just try to just stick them in to the same spot. So do not do all of them at the same time. I say one by one. This one is actually connected to that one, so you don't have to do that. So I'm gonna do the next ones for you on camera. I just have to move the camera to a, a better place. Let's do the little one, it's much easier. So right here, take that out. And it's only like five of them right there. And then slowly guide it out, which this is gonna be a little bit difficult. Okay, so we have to slowly guide it out. The reason of that is that this part right over here, this is where the key actually, when you press the key, it bounces off of that. And that's where it sits. And you do not wanna, you don't wanna cut that or damage it. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take this microchip out right here. And that makes things a lot easier because it's right there. There we go. Okay, so this goes back. This goes back in here.
And this is what I was talking about earlier, is you have to study your keyboard. No matter what keyboard it is, what you're gonna take apart, I'm gonna take apart this one right here. You have to study your keyboard and make sure, is it the right decision to actually use in your model? There we go. So now, as you can see, the contact board is free. Let me just lay it right here. And the reason I'm also doing it this way is because, you see, you, you, these are very fragile right here. So try not to bend them all the way. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I could take out all the electronics freely without damaging anything. And as you see, I put it back wherever the red's at. Okay, so now let's take out the main board. Well, first, before anything, make sure you don't have batteries in it, which I actually do. So I have to take out the batteries. I'm gonna put these over here. Um, and the battery compartment's right over here. So take out all the batteries because you don't want to fry anything. So that's one battery right there. Two, three. It takes six AA batteries, everybody. There we go. See, all the batteries are out. This is the battery compartment right here. And I'm sorry I didn't put that on camera. Take out the main controller. See this right over here, this is the amplifier board. This is your amplifier board and your main board. And this right over here, this is your synthesizer board. This is what controls the, the, uh, the piano sound right here. Now there's gonna be a lot of these like little ties around and there's going to be some tape we'll just take that all apart make sure you don't scratch any electronics so that's going to be the most treacherous part right here okay so i did that part right over here these contacts you're going to need so put them aside because you're going to need them for the contact board Now it's time for me to take apart. This is the um, the power jack. If you have a magnetized screwdriver, it's always good. You know what I do not suggest is that you automatically just start cutting up the keyboard because you don't know what it is inside of it. You have to look inside and see if you could do it or not, if it's gonna allow you to do it, and what your options are if you were gonna do that. Um, a lot of people, what they usually do, they just stick the keyboard straight in, the whole keyboard, and then work around the piano casing, which is a lot easier, but what I'm trying to show you is a way how to make it look like a real piano and not like a digital piano basically what i'm talking about is the body and showing off the keys so okay so right over here that is your main power supply uh jack which you hook up your um your adapter to this over here and you can see it's hooked up to something else right over here And I say, this right over here, this is, you know, if the wires are a little bit too long, they add this in so you can shorten it, basically. And I'm gonna end up taking that off. So I can have more longer wires. But here you go, that's your headphone jack right there. And on the other side, right over here, I have to take out that board. I have another one of these um, Yamaha MP12s coming tomorrow. Basically, it's the same thing. 
and I keep on thinking maybe I should have ordered the, uh, the MP32, which is the 76 key. Now this board over here, oops, see that's why I took out the batteries. If one of those screws were to land on, on one of those chips by accident and fry it, you won't have a keyboard. Okay, so this is a little tricky, but this over here, this is your, um, this is your sustain jack and your USB. And that's it. That's basically it. So what I do is I take the rest of it. Only thing that you're going to have to worry about is over here. You might have to disconnect it and reconnect it if you can solder it or something. Right here. And it looks like it's an easy connection, honestly. This is your battery compartment. And it does look like it's a very, very easy connection. I would not be using the batteries on here because I, I mean, it would be cool, but I will be hooking this up to a main power source. So, you know, I never have to change the batteries, but it's okay. Because what I want to do is um, when I hook this up to a main power source, I also, I'm also going to hook up the main, um, the, the, external speakers that is going to be in the speaker box into a main power source too. And I'm thinking about actually putting a car battery inside there. I have to look that up. But that's basically it for um, the keyboard. Okay, so right over here, as you can see, this over here, this is the Kawhi MP9000 keybed. And, or to say keyboard, basically. And you can see, it's just like an acoustic piano, the way how it's made with real natural wood. I will be sanding down pieces of the natural wood and making the key look 10 times better if I could, because this was a used keyboard um, when I bought it. Here, over here, this is the keys of the Yamaha MP12B. As you can see, they come in a full set. So, this doesn't measure out to the length of, and I can show you, let me put this one down. If you look at this last key and look at this last key, it does not measure out to the length of the keyboard. So the MP12 keys are a little bit shorter, but they still have the same depth right there, which is no problem. So they're a little bit shorter because it stops to right here um, at, the, um, at the breaking point right there. And that means the sharps are a little bit shorter too. So with the Kawhi keys that I'm using, it's going to be a little bit longer and this will bounce on top of the contact. Um, another thing you want to measure if you're going to change out keyboards is measure the distance. And the distance is basically the same, which is pretty cool. Alright, so this makes my job a lot easier. Since I'm using the Kawhi MP9000 keys, I have actually right over here, this is the bushing board, so I just have to set up a new cradle for that, measure it inside the, um, inside the casing that I'm building. This is where the keys actually sit on, so that's no problem. After I embrace that, I might end up putting a new, um, new set of felts right there. And over here, that in the back, where you see all these pins, this is the pivot point, so I gotta figure out where is it, where am I going to end those keys? And then cut right there. Same thing for here and here. Which is no problem. This I probably don't even have to cut. I'm going to just make another piece of wood. Just to save that piece of bar. So everybody, just to let you know, without the casing, without the keys, this is the Yamaha MP12B. Well, it could be a W too, because it's the same thing. But this is all of the, um, the circuitry that you see on here. And you can see there's tons of long cables. 
so you have lots of flexibility and even the volume knob is separate so you can even have that hidden in a, in a different place here's your key contact what I want to look at is I want to look at the schematics of the Yamaha MP like the 30 the 31 the 32 I think that was a 31 um, but the 76 key model of it even the Piagero and I want to see it if it takes the same contact board. If it does take a same contact board like a 76, instead of making this a 61, I might end up making it into a 76, which is more brilliant. It's uh, the 61 and a 76 key version is the same thing. Um, the the 70, 76 key version had a more powerful amplifier system on it because it, I think it was a bigger board and bigger speakers but I'm not going to be using the speakers as you, as you can see how small it is so every part of the board as you can see has a little connection you can just take that right off you don't have to unsolder you don't have to snip it off and this speaker line goes all the way to right here that's a speaker line right there too so this is very easy and as you can see, it's very um, manipula manipulative. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yes, you can manipulate the whole keyboard and circuitry. And with the cables being that long, it's you can set wherever you want. Like say for instance over here, these are all where your sounds and your controls are. And so I can set that to on top of the keyboard or on top of the piano that I'm building or at a separate compartment where it's hidden very very easy this over here the power jack this is going to be inside internally because I'm gonna run this off of a main breaker uh, not breaker but I should say <laughs> I'm gonna run this off of a main power surge which is gonna have even a heavier connection this over here your headphones I'm gonna run this inside because once I get the upgraded speakers it's gonna have headphones built into it which is no problem probably a different jack and over here your pedal and your USB you can run that inside too uh, your USB you can actually get an adapter that's longer and you can split them up so you can have two USBs and here's your volume knob. Very simple, very easy. Well, today's a new day, which is basically, I woke up early and I sized up the cheeks of the piano. Now this, those cheeks I did, and you can make them whatever shape you want for your grand piano. But those cheeks I did for a, um, a splittable grand piano that I was working with. And as you can see, on the side of it it's open but I'm gonna close that back up I'm gonna seal that back up so I at least have some more um, some more grip on that uh, on that end but I also fit it in the Kawhi keyboard now as you can see it has real piano keys which is really cool real wood and it's long for that so I thought these cheeks would be perfect I didn't want the project to go to waste so like instead of me building new cheeks for it um, let me just use the ones that I have already built. This over here, this was a template for it, and I might have to make the cheeks a little bit wider. I added more keys than 61 keys. I thought I see what it looked like if it was gonna be a 76 key, but I realized 76 key, I can't go too much with it. So I had to add it as a 73 key, which is close, close enough, which is really good. So my other, that even though I just got a brand new, uh, uh, MP12B. I was thinking about ordering the MP32. So, you know, that's my other option for that. But it's looking really, really, really good. I mean, I'm very, very shocked, very surprised. Um, this over here, this is the uh, bendable plywood, which I will be putting on uh, probably today or tomorrow. I gotta see how much time do I have because I have a gig. 
bendable plywood, all this wood that you could get, get over here that you see, you can get that at Lowe's or Home Depot. But bendable plywood, you're gonna have to actually call your um, your local wood store to see if they have it. Most wood stores have to special order it. Um, it's not any option for like uh, a chain wood store or home improvement store like Home Depot and Lowe's or Ace Hardware. So you might have to call your specialized wood store to get bendable plywood. My wood store that I go to is Constantine and they had bendable plywood and on top of that they had stick-on veneer, which um, peel and stick veneer, which I did here and it contacts to the wood perfectly. And this is the uh, peel and stick veneer which already has the finish already on it. But, so, yeah, project is looking really, really good. I am leaning towards a 73 key. So maybe, push come and shove, if I look at the schematics of the keyboard, I don't have to order a new keyboard. All I have to do is order the contact board for a 73 key. If I could do that, then it would be magical. And, it, I'm sorry, for a 76 key, make it into a 73 key. I just won't use the other keys, but I think we could work something out with it if I just, you know, think a little bit more and see how we're going to do that. As you can see over here, previous projects, it's kind of dirty here, so I'm going to have to change out all the white keys, make it brand new again, which is no problem. I was planning to do that anyway. So, okay, so what I did is I actually bought another piece of wood for the soundboard. And it could be a very good flat piece of wood. It doesn't have to be real thick because it has to resonate. So what you're going to have to do is take your trusty highlighter right over here and just trace around the whole rim. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Uh, this is where the starting point for the uh, soundboard is going to begin. So I'm going to start from right here, just trace around. And if it's a little off, it's okay because you can straighten it. So right over here. That should be no problem. I usually get around curved edges and then trace them all just like that. That's what you're going to cut out actually. And of course you have to remove the legs. Um, I removed the sides because I'm going to do some editing to the sides which I'll show you. And this side you don't have to actually do, you just have to mark it where it's going to end. Right there. Alright, so I think we got our template for the soundboard. Lift this up. Try not to step on the soundboard. <laughs> but that's it right there. And I hope you guys can see that on the camera. But it's exactly your template right there. So my ending and starting point, which I'll take this piece of wood over here, straighten it up, and move the highlighter. Just to make it just a little tad straighter. <laughs> Over here, from my beginning, I can move this up over a little bit because I'm not going to do that yet. So, from my beginning point to my ending point, which is right here, beginning point right there, ending point right here, and it may look diagonal, but that's the way how the piano is designed, how my piano is going to be designed. For like a little bit of grand, you don't have to do it like this.
And everybody, there's the soundboard. That's the way how it is. So now I gotta cut the soundboard out and um, and basically put it to shape, make it fit to the room. So what I could do is I could put back on the legs and just um, cut out the soundboard, put back on the legs and wire, and then fit it into itself. Or push from the shove, you don't have to put back on the legs and the wire yet. Because now what I'm gonna actually do after that is build the rim of the piano.
soon you're going to basically insulate the whole thing. So I'll show you how to do that too. But when you insulate the whole thing, when you get your speakers, you have to cut out your speaker holes. Basically your south ports, which is going to lead to the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my soundboard and just cut it, you know, so I'm going to fit it right onto the piano. If it's the right fit, then I can actually install it on. This is going to be only temporary because you're going to end up taking it back out for the speakers and the reverb air. So right now we're just going to put it on and then build the rim. Everybody. The soundboard is installed. It doesn't have to be perfect because what you're going to end up doing is probably end up sanding some areas where you know it just basically needs to be sanded uh, or cutting some areas basically. Um, and also, what I'm going to end up doing, the soundboard's not going to look back just like that. It's going to be a different color, so you have to re veneer it. And once you re veneer it and stain it, it's going to look much different. It's going to look more like a soundboard not just like a regular plain piece of wood um, after you varnish it. So that comes on another video. Okay everybody, so now that the soundboard is actually installed onto the frame, because this now becomes a grand piano frame for you. 
and all you have to do is just basically install the rim of the cannon. These are the old sheets that I had from the scribble grand cannon that I made. Um, so I won't be using the window part, which is right over here. So I'm going to have to cut this part off right here from the back, from both sides of the uh, cheeks. I can still use the cheeks, so I don't have to make any more cheeks, which is a good thing. The only thing I have to do is just cut off those parts and then install it in. So here we go.
the rim is done. Don't worry about the other side, I'll show you how to do that later. Um, there's no need for sanding because now you're going to put on the second part. Now, with the second part, it's a little bit different from the first part how you just put on. The first part, you're just actually putting on your face. The second part right over here is actually the same thing. Make sure it's the most smoothest side that you're going to actually get. Once you get it in place, you're going to add a clamp. So if you have these clamps, or if you get these clamps at Home Depot or Lowe's, which is really good, you can show you how to clamp. Clamp it in the areas where it has to stay, you know. So if the wood has to go up just a little bit, this will come in handy.
definitely done. We have the curved side. As I said, once you have the right specifications for the wood, basically the right cut that you have, your woodsman, or to say your um, your uh, wood shop guy, should be able to cut it to the right specifications that you want it to. Um, this added up really, really perfectly. So I can't wait to do the other side, which I'm going to show you. Now it's time to actually take off the lens. And this, you don't have to worry about gluing because you already just basically put all the screws in. It's going to stay in place. Voila. So, everything's in place. And don't worry about sanding yet. Do not worry about coloring or finishing at all yet. That comes a little bit later. Okay, so now we're at the part where we're at the left side of the piano, which is basically the wall side of the dealing with the concert brand, kind of concert brand look, as you can see. Um, on a baby brand, it's going to be a little bit shorter, but on a concert brand, it's going to be a little bit longer. So this is a shrunk down version of the concert brand, I should say. Um, this is going to be the easy part. Instead of you using the bendable plywood, what you can use is a laminate plywood. So cut it to the right size, just like how you do with the cheek. Put it against each other. And I think it's best if you use like a leather one to make sure that it's going to be level. By the way, from the top to the bottom. One for the inner and one for the outer. So I'm going to install them in right now. This is a pretty good piano.
course, we have to continue another time. So, of course, this is going to be to be continued. Please do me a favor. Please click like, subscribe, follow me on everything. If you're on Facebook, please go to my YouTube and subscribe. And also click the notification button. Also, if you're on my YouTube, please join me on my Facebook fan page. Also, do me a favor. Please subscribe to my friends, Bradley, which is basically the Bradge. He's a keyboard enthusiast. And also subscribe to another keyboard enthusiast who is also my friend, which is called Keyboard Crazy, which is Michael Lowe. Thank you so much, everybody. To be continued. I'll see ya. Bye-bye.